Hi, I'm Sandy, and I'm back in the kitchen with Pampered Chef. Slow cooking and pressure cooking offer people a convenient way to get food on the table without a lot of hassle. If you've ever been wondering when to use a slow cooker versus when to use a pressure cooker, you're not alone. I'm gonna show you some tips on how to choose the right tool for the right time. The key difference between slow cooking and pressure cooking is a very simple one. Time. Slow cooking cooks food slowly while pressure cooking cooks food quickly. They're both options for hands-off cooking when you know you have a lot of multitasking in the kitchen to do. You actually get very similar outcomes from each with very different cooking methods. Let's dive in. Now I'm making garlic parmesan chicken with cauliflower mash in the slow cooker. I love this recipe because it really highlights the benefit of cooking with the slow cooker. So I've already seared my chicken thighs. What's so great about our slow cooker stand is that you can sear your chicken right here in the rock crock on the stovetop and then transfer it over to the slow cooker. And then I just have one head of cauliflower that's cut up into florets and I'm gonna go ahead and press some garlic into it. So this recipe works great in the slow cooker because if you were to pressure cook cauliflower, it would turn to mush basically. I love using garlic in recipes. It's a great way to add a lot of flavor without adding too much sodium. Okay, I'm just gonna give this a stir. And then on my chicken, before I seared it, I seasoned it with some Italian seasoning and just salt and pepper. First, I'm gonna put the cauliflower in the bottom of the pan, top with the chicken. Also, chicken thighs are great when you're slow cooking because they get so tender and fall off the bone. And they're actually less expensive than chicken breasts, which I like. Okay, and it's that easy. I'm just gonna cover with a lid and I'm gonna cook it on high for three hours. You can also cook it on low for six hours. If it was the weekend, I'd probably cook it on low because I'm usually not doing anything right in the middle of the day versus around three or four, I'm running around with my family. So now my food is done. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the chicken. It is smelling delicious. I'm taking the chicken out so that I can mash the cauliflower right in the pot. Okay, that's looking good. And then I'm gonna mash my cauliflower. I like using cauliflower in this recipe, but you can also sub out red potatoes. Cauliflowers are a good way to sneak in some extra vegetables for my family. So how does slow cooking actually work? It uses a moist, gentle heat to cook foods over a long period of time usually about three to 10 hours. So because of this long cook time, it requires a little bit more planning. But the great thing is that you can leave your slow cooker and go to sleep or go to work and come back to a nice hot cooked meal. All right, so this is looking good. So I'm just gonna transfer some cauliflower to the plate. Top with my chicken thigh. Parmesan. So beautiful. I love this recipe because it's a family favorite. But the other things I love about the slow cooker is that it keeps food warm for a long time. So it's a great go-to for when you're having people over or having a party. I also always use it on Thanksgiving for my mashed potatoes because it keeps my stovetop free for other dishes and you can serve straight from it. So now that we've explored slow cooking, let's move on to pressure cooking. Now I'm gonna make chicken parmesan pasta in our quick cooker. This recipe really highlights pressure cooking in a few different ways. First, I already seared my chicken in the inner pot of the quick cooker. This is a great feature of many pressure cookers that you can just sear and saute right in the pot and not have to dirty other pans. Secondly, we're making pasta. Pasta in a slow cooker would just turn to mush because of that long cooking time, but because of the sped up cooking time of a pressure cooker, it cooks really nicely. Third is that we use liquid. I'm gonna use a jar of sauce and a cup of water. You always want liquid when cooking in a pressure cooker. That's what helps create the steam and the pressure to cook your food. So I already have my chicken that's been um, seasoned with some garlic and herb rub. Two cups of penne pasta a whole jar of marinara sauce. And then your water. The 
garlic and herb rub really flavors this recipe so nicely. So much flavor from the rub and from the sauce. So now that's all stirred together. I'm gonna go ahead and put on my lid. I'm gonna hit custom and set the time for five minutes. Now that the pasta is done cooking, you wanna release the pressure. There are two different ways to release the pressure, manually or natural release. Now I manually release the pressure for this recipe. This works better for foods that cook quicker like pasta. For longer cooking foods like potatoes or big cuts of meat, you wanna let the pressure release naturally. This sort of extends the cooking time a little bit longer for those longer to cook foods. Now once the pressure is totally released, the pressure indicator will go down just like this is right now. This means it's safe to open. This smells delish. This is a really fast go-to meal for my family. So let's talk about how pressure cooking works. As the temperature of the liquid inside the pot increases, it builds steam. The steam increases pressure, which decreases the cooking time. Now let me tell you why I love pressure cooking. Number one, it really locks in the flavor of foods. Number two, because of the shorter cooking time, it preserves nutrients. And number three, since I'm not always the best planner, it really comes to my rescue. You can cook a variety of foods, from oatmeal at breakfast all the way to a cheesecake at dessert, and you can cook from frozen if you forget to take the chicken out of the freezer for dinner. If you're still not sure when to choose a slow cooker over a pressure cooker, here are some tips. Choose a slow cooker if you wanna come home to a hot cooked meal, or you wanna keep food warm for a long time for a party without burning, or you need to free up your stovetop or your oven. Choose a quick cooker if you need food done fast. Also, if you wanna build flavor by searing or sauteing right in the pot. And if you need to make a variety of dishes from oatmeal all the way to cheesecake. As you can see, both slow cooking and pressure cooking offer great ways for hands-off cooking in the kitchen, with the end result being a delicious home-cooked meal. Thanks for watching.